good morning students and welcome to the lecture series on fourier transform so in this series we shall study fourier transform which divided in three categories so in this first part we shall study about the what is the fourier transform and we define fourier transforms fourier cosine transform and fourier sine transforms and in the last we shall study about the uh, Fourier transform, Fourier cosine transform, and Fourier sine transform of some special functions. So let us define what is the Fourier transform. We know that if f t is a periodic function, then f t can be expressed as a Fourier series as follows: f t equals to a zero upon two plus summation n one up to infinity, a n cos of n t plus b n sine of n t, where f t is a periodic function. With period two pi, and this function f t is defined in the interval minus pi two plus pi suppose, and where a n and b n are the Fourier coefficients of the function f t, which are defined by these integrals, a n equals to one upon pi integration from minus pi to plus pi f t cos of n t d t, and b n equals to one upon pi minus pi to plus pi f t. So we know this. If your function is periodic function, then this periodic function f t can be expressed in terms of a Fourier series by the application of the previous semester. All right. Now suppose if your function f t is not a periodic function, then it cannot be represented by a Fourier series over the entire real line. However, we may be able to represent f t in terms of an integral form. It means if your function is not a periodic function. then we can express this function f t in terms of integral form function right so in this chapter we deal with fourier transforms only the four four fourier integrals one may refers to any book on fourier analysis so basically the fourier transform is a mathematical technique that transform a function of time suppose f t to a function of frequency f of omega so this is the standard definition of the fourier transform let ft be a piece wise continuous function an absolutely integrable function over the interval minus infinity plus infinity then the fourier transform which is abbreviated as ft of the small function ft denoted by this f of ft is defined as 1 upon root of 2 pi integration from minus infinity to plus infinity f of t e raised to the power minus iota omega t dt and this integral is represented by capital f of omega if this integral is exist then we say that your fourier function of the fourier function of fourier transform of this function f t is exist all right so this is our standard definition for the fourier transformation if we compare this definition with the earlier definition of the laplace transform then you could see that here e raised to the power minus iota omega t is the kernel of the fourier transform all right while in case of laplace transform the kernel was e raised to the power st or pt all right and the limit of integration are from minus infinity to plus infinity while in case of laplace transform the limits are from zero to infinity so this is our fourier transform of any function ft which is the function of the time t now if your fourier transform of any function ft is exist then we can find its inverse fourier transformation so assume that this integral minus infinity to plus infinity where capital f omega is the fourier transform of small ft d omega converges convergence means this integral is exist and it has a unique finite value then we define the inverse fourier transformation which is abbreviated as ift of f of omega as which is equals to simply actual function ft small ft so this is 1 upon root of 2 pi integration from minus infinity to plus infinity f of omega which is the fourier transform of this small function ft e raised to the power eta omega t d of omega so if we compare the definition earlier definition which is given by equation number 2 here kernel is e raised to the power minus iota omega t 
all right which is multiplied by actual function while in case of inverse fourier transformation your kernel is e raised power plus iota omega t and this kernel is multiplied by the fourier transform of the function right so this integral if it exist then it is represented by small ft which is known as the inverse fourier transformation of capital f omega where i is the complex number which is square root of minus 1 right so this definition is very important so right so in case of fourier transformation your kernel is e raised power minus omega t and this is coefficient which is 1 upon root of 2 pi right and in case of inverse fourier transformation your kernel of the transformation is e raised power plus iota omega t right so keep in mind this thing now we know that any function can be split up into e1 and odd functions et or ot suppose this is our function ft then this function ft can be expressed in terms of e1 function and odd functions so this is 1 upon 2 f of t plus f of minus t plus 1 upon 2 times f of t minus f of minus t because this first term represent the even part of the function because we know that if your function is a even function then if you replace t by minus t then your f of minus t is equals to f of t and if this simplify it gives f of t only all right now if your function is a odd function then f of f of minus t equals to minus of f t then this again gives f of t so overall this function f t can be expressed as e1 and odd portions so this is first part is represented by et and second part is represented by ot hence any fourier transform can always be expressed in terms of the fourier cosine transform and fourier sine transform it means if we can express the function f in terms of e1 and odd portions then we can express our fourier transform in terms of fourier cosine transform as well as a fourier sine transform now if ft is an even function right then its fourier cosine transformation is given by f of c this is, here suffix denote the fourier cosine transform and here coefficient is root square root of 2 upon pi while in case of fourier transformation your coefficient was 1 upon square root of 2 pi integration from 0 to infinity while in case of fourier transformation your integration was from minus infinity to plus infinity and this ft cos of omega t dt this cos of omega t is the kernel of the fourier cosine transformation dt now if this integral is exist then we say that the fourier cosine transformation of this function ft exist and which is represented by fc omega all right it means fourier cosine transformation for any even function ft is given by this integral square root of 2 upon pi integration from 0 to infinity f of t cos of omega t dt and similarly the inverse fourier cosine transformation which is abbreviated as ifct is given by ft equals to square root of 2 upon pi integration from 0 to infinity fc omega cos of omega t d of omega all right similarly if your function ft is an odd function then its fourier sine transformation which is abbreviated by fst is given by square root of 2 upon pi integration from 0 to infinity f of t sin of omega t dt which is equals to fs omega if this integral exist like so if we compare the fourier cosine and fourier sine transformation the actual difference is kernel function here in case of fourier cosine transformation kernel was cos of omega t while in case of fourier sine transformation your kernel is sin of omega t right and the similarly the inverse fourier sine transformation is given by ft equals to square root of 2 upon pi integration from 0 to infinity fs omega sin of omega t d of omega right so these are some basic definitions of fourier transform fourier cosine transform and fourier sine transform now let us take some example based on this definition so first example find the fourier transform of the function ft equals to 1 which is defining the interval 
mod of t is less than one, it means interval from minus one to plus one, and write the inverse transform also. It means we need to find the Fourier transform of the constant function in the interval minus one to one. So we use the definition to find the Fourier transformation. So Fourier transformation of the small function f t equals to. By the definition, we know that Fourier transformation of f t equals to one upon square root of two pi integration from minus infinity to plus infinity f of t e raised to the power minus omega t dt. Is the given function is defined in the interval minus one to plus one. So therefore, the limits are from minus one to one. And this f t equals to one, so this is one times e raised to the power minus iota omega t dt. Now, if we integrate this integral in the limits minus one to plus one, then we get minus one upon square root of two pi, one upon iota omega e raised to the power minus iota omega t. Lower limit is minus one, upper limit is plus one, and if we simplify this limit. Then we get square root of two upon pi sine of omega upon omega. So it means if your function is a constant function in the interval minus one to plus one, then its Fourier transform is square root of two upon pi sine of omega upon omega. And similarly, the inverse transform, inverse Fourier transform of this function is is actually function f t. So inverse transform of root upon two pi sine of omega upon omega equals to f t, which is equals to one in the defined interval minus one to plus one. Next example: find the Fourier transform of the exponential function e raised to the power minus a t if t is greater than zero and a is also a positive number, and also write the inverse transform. So again, we need to find the Fourier transform of Exponential function e raised to the power minus a t, which is defined for positive values of t. So we use the definition to find the Fourier transformation, and the, by the definition of the Fourier transformation of any function, which is one upon root of two pi integration from minus infinity to plus infinity f of t e raised to the power minus iota omega t dt. As your function is defined for positive values of t, then this limit from zero to infinity, e raised to the power minus a t, e raised to the power minus iota omega t dt. Now, if we simplify this in term, then it becomes e raised to the power minus times a plus iota omega t dt. Now, if we integrate this, then we get one upon a plus iota omega integration. Limit from zero to infinity e raised to the power minus a plus iota omega t. Now, if we simplify then this limit, then we get one upon root of two pi times one upon a plus iota omega. All right. It means Fourier transform of this exponential function e to the power minus a t equals to one upon root of two pi times one upon a plus iota omega. Similarly, if here Minus a is replaced by some plus a, then it it becomes one upon a minus i to omega. You could simplify that, right? And the inverse transform of this Fourier transform is given by the actual function e to the power minus a t t greater than zero a greater than zero. Now, a special remark here because this function f t is given by e raised to the power minus a t or t greater than zero a greater than zero. Now, this function can be expressed in terms of A unity step function, which we have already defined in the lecture series on Fourier Laplace transform. So this f t can be written as e raised to the power minus a t times u of a t, where u of a t is the unity step function, which has this continuity as t at t equals to a. And so it means your Fourier transformation of this function is. One upon root of two pi one times one upon a plus i tau omega, where u of a t is the unity step function. So this is very important example, and we need to learn this result because we apply this result directly in, in the solution of the boundary value programs by using Fourier transform method. Now next example. Find the Fourier transform of the function e raised to the power minus a times mod of t, and t is defined over the whole real axis, and a is greater than zero. And also write the inverse transform. 
So we have f t equals to e raised power a t. Now, if we split this function e raised power minus a mod of t for t greater than zero and t less than zero, then this function becomes e raised power a t t less than zero and e raised power minus a t t greater than zero. Now, therefore, the by the definition of the Fourier transform, this is one upon root of two pi integration from minus infinity plus infinity f of t e raised power minus i tau omega t dt. Now, if we apply the value of the function f t, then this integral is divided into two parts, minus infinity to plus zero and zero to plus infinity. Uh, and so, for t less than zero, your function value is e raised power at, and for the t greater than zero, your function value is e raised power minus at. Now, if we simplify these integrals and the, both the terms, then we get square root of two upon pi a upon a square plus omega square. Which is the Fourier transform of this function f t equals to e raised power minus a mod of t. This is again a very important result which we have to remember. Right. Now, similarly, the inverse transformation of this function is e is equals to actual function. Now, next is find the Fourier transform of this function e raised power minus a times t square, where a is positive number, and also write the inverse transform. So again, we use the definition to find the Fourier transformation. So this is our definition of the Fourier transform. If we substitute the value of the function in this integral, then we get this term, and this term can be simplified as e raised power minus a times a t square plus iota omega t dt. Now, to simplify this integral, we make this term as a perfect square. So this can be written as if you take a common out. So this is minus a times t square plus iota omega t upon a. Now to make the perfect square, we add omega square upon four a square and subtract minus omega square upon four a square. So these first three terms gives t plus iota omega upon two a square and plus last term omega square upon four a square dt. Now further if is Simplify, then we get e raised power minus omega square upon 4a upon root of 2 pi integration from minus infinity to plus infinity e raised power minus a times t plus iota omega upon 2a whole square dt. Now, to simplify this integral, let us assume that this power term is equal to some constant square, variable square u square. Then our integral becomes e raised power minus infinity to plus infinity e k power minus u square du, and which is equal to root of two pi, root of pi, which is an error function. Basically, this is an error function whose value is equal to root of pi. So value of this integral is one upon root of two a e raised power minus omega square upon four a. So it means if your function is e raised power minus a t square, then its Fourier transform is one upon root of two a e raised power minus omega square upon four a, and the inverse transformation of this function is given by actual function. It means Fourier transform of this function is equal to this one, and inverse of this function is actual function. Now, if we put a equals to one upon two in this one, then we then we can see that the Fourier transform. And the inverse Fourier transformation of e k power minus a t square are same. It means if a if we put a equals to one upon two, then this becomes e raised power minus t square upon two, and this becomes e raised power minus omega square upon two. So this is an example of a function whose Fourier transform and Fourier inverse Fourier transformation are same. So example is e raised power minus t square upon two. And this function is also known as a Gaussian function. Now let us take find the Fourier cosine and Fourier sine transformation of the function f t equals to k, which is defined in the interval zero to k, and it is zero for t greater than a. So we use the definition to find the Fourier cosine and Fourier sine transforms. So f c omega equals to root two upon pi zero to infinity. F of t cos of omega t, which is the definition of the Fourier cosine transform, which is equal to root two upon pi, because our function is defined in the interval zero to a, which is non-zero value k. So this limits becomes zero to k, 
and k is cos of omega t dt. Now, if you simplify this integral, then we get root 2 upon pi k times sine of a omega upon omega. And similarly, we can find the Fourier sine transformation. And this is our definition of the Fourier sine transformation. And the uh, integral becomes root 2 upon pi 0 to a k times sine of omega t dt. And if we simplify this integral, then we get root 2 upon pi k times 1 minus cos of a omega upon omega. Right? Note, if ft equals to k equals to constant in the right half of the plane, 0 to infinity, then these transform does not exist. Right? So, in this example, if a is approaches to infinity, then this fun function does not have Fourier cosine transform as well as Fourier sine transformation. So, this is an example of the function whose Fourier sine and cosine transform exist for the finite interval while for the right half of the plane, this function does not have Fourier cosine as well as Fourier sine transforms. Now, next example, find the Fourier cosine and Fourier sine transform of the function p raised power minus at. Now, we use the definition to find the Fourier cosine and Fourier sine transformation. So, by the definition of the Fourier cosine transformation, this ft is replaced by e to the power minus at. Now, if we simplify this integral, then we get e raised power minus at upon a square plus omega square minus a cos of omega t plus omega sine of omega t integration limits are lower limit is 0 and upper limit is infinity. If we simplify this, then we get root 2 upon pi a upon a square plus omega square. And similarly, Fourier sine transformation is given by root 2 upon pi omega upon a square plus omega square. Right? Now, as we know that your Fourier transform can be split into Fourier cosine transformation as well as Fourier sine transformation. And we know that Fourier transformation of this function f t equals to e to the power minus a t equals to 1 upon root of 2 pi 1 upon a plus iota omega. It means if we add these two terms, root 2 upon pi, root 2 upon pi, a upon a square plus omega square plus omega upon a square plus omega square and simplify, then we get 1 upon root of 2 pi times times 1 upon a plus iota omega, right? Thank you for today. And in the next lecture, we will continue with the Fourier transformation of